in the game. Here's Kamen. Chris takes it up with both hands and rips it down. Boy, he threw out some punishment with that two-hand throwdown. And Clark, now's the time to do it. Continue to attack that rim. For a while, the Spurs were viewed as a slow-it-down team from their championships almost a decade ago. That isn't the case at all anymore. You know, it, I think it took the viewing public quite a while to catch on, though, yeah. Kevin, because now most people look at the Spurs as one of the more exciting brands of basketball in our league. Just watching one game of them, and, and now you know that is the case. And it's sent back by Aldridge. Always going up for the alley-oop here. No hesitation at all on that alley-oop. Saw his teammate with the path to the hoop, and bang! Lobbed it right up there for him. And he was ready for it, elevated, made the catch. You saw the result. And for the Spurs playing up tempo, I mean, they made that adjustment several years back to their credit. Since then, they've been one of the more up tempo and offensive minded teams in the league. He is an automatic finisher when he gets into that area. You know, he picks the simple one handed stuff to get the two points. Yeah, and in a close game, though, guys. Those could be really important points. Time called here. The Spurs decide to talk it over. And, and some stats to kind of back up the Spurs playing that up-tempo style. They, they led the league last year in distance travel as a team. Their players would cover almost 18 miles per game play. That tells you there's tremendous ball movement, but more importantly, body movement. Morris Diaz checked in for San Antonio. Mills comes in for Parker. San Antonio shooting their second and third shots at the line right here. And, and they've done some really nice work at the foul line, knocking down 80%. And that's a little better than they did last year from the free throw line. As magical as the 2014 playoffs were for the Blazers, remember they beat Houston in that first round, that great shot by Lillard uh, late to win it and move on. 2015, not as much. You know, Greg, they drew a very tough Memphis team, as you recall, in the first round. Yeah, you, you often talk about styles making fights very similar in this series. They were going to drop the first three games before being bounced, but, but still a good showing for a team that struggled mightily down the stretch with injuries. Aminu with the bucket. Just under two and a half minutes into the third quarter now. Mills passes to Leonard. And Mills kicks to Diaw. And now Farouk Aminu gets the whistle that time. That'll be his second foul of the game. So it's the Spurs now. Leonard dishes to Mills. Came in with the block. A three from McCollum. Good. Great play by Willard to set it up. Lillard's got his seventh assist of the game with that last one. There's the triple. It'll go. The Portland lead is cut down to just two points in the bucket from Patrick Mills. And how about that for a response? Well, it sounded as though, or at least it looked as though it sounded like, we'll give you a three, and then we'll take it right back. And two free throws coming up as he misses that one. Drawing the whistle and a lot of contact there. It's going to be a Mason Plummer. And the Spurs being the defending champions out west heading into last year, but they would end up sixth in the conference with a record of 55 and 27. Had a record of 32 and 20 against the rest of the West. Looking at who's out there now for the Spurs. David West, he's checked in for Duncan. Kyle Anderson comes in for Kawhi Leonard. And it's Ginobili in for Daniel Green. Well, we knew the West was going to be wild and very competitive all season long last year. And the Spurs, Clark, epitomized just how crazy and tough things can be there. Yeah, and with about three weeks left in the season, the Spurs were sitting in the seventh playoff spot. Then they go on the tear and win 11 games in a row to jump to number two. Finally lose one game, and they're all the way back to six. It's deflected. And that's out of bounds. San Antonio will retain possession. And you know what? Just a little too much heat on that pass for him to come up with the steal. 
Yeah, I agree. I mean, that was going to be a tough catch for either one of them. So Portland ends up going with the new group. And San Antonio also making a switch. Martin's checked in. Shots good by Mills. I'm not sure who was supposed to pick him up, but somebody's going to get an earful from the coach for leaving him that wide open. I'll tell you what, the defenders didn't even get a sniff of him on that move to the hoop. That shot's good on the assist by Ginobili. Mills has got 10 points in the quarter. Man, oh man, Kevin. He's really feeling it from three-point range now. All of a sudden, it seems like he just can't miss. San Antonio's got more than a 50% success rate on their three-pointer since halftime. They're four of seven. 41 seconds left in the third quarter of the game. And with the time left, they still can go two for one. Boy, they've got to do it fast. They must hurry from here. No good with the elbow jump. Trailblazers trail by three. West with the block. It just hasn't been a very good day for him, guys. They need him to start burying some of those. Kicks it to Mills. Back to Ginobili. And there's the feet to Mills. Fires the three. And again, it's San Antonio with the three. He's found the rhythm here in the third quarter, Kevin. And his confidence is palpable. You can feel it. Well, it's been an exciting game. Plenty of offense as we head to the fourth quarter. Spurs lead by six. From Portland, we're back in a moment. We welcome you back to what has been a good one here as we get into the fourth quarter. Harkless is out there with Myers Leonard. Then it's Henderson. Then there's Davis. And it's Roberts in it, the one. That's the group in the game for the Trailblazers. Harkless kicks to Roberts. He's been up and in off the pretty assist. Roberts got the first points up on the board here in the fourth for the Trailblazers. Leonard draws the double. Spurs passing it around. Stolen by Henderson. Roberts passes to Henderson. Harkless with the screen for Henderson. Harkless with it. Leonard picks him up. Down to five on the shot clock. Henderson kicks to Harkless. And the rejection by Leonard. And it's out of bounds. And they say it was last touched by Leonard. 60 seconds off the clock here in the fourth. Portland was just fantastic at home last season. We expect that, though, of this team, Greg. 32-9. and nine. It was packed each game. And, and Kevin, of that 32-win mark, how about that was the fourth best in the entire league. You, you don't win your division without winning at home, and Portland definitely took care of business. Well, I tell you what, it seems as though Portland is always good at home. It was 2007 when they last had a losing record in this building. Even when they're down overall, they're always tough at home. You can't afford to get him that kind of a look. Well, you know, he came off a good screen, but still, as a defender, you've got to do a better job of fighting over and through that. And unfortunately, guys, for Portland, they didn't have home court advantage in the playoffs. As great as they were at home all year, it could have made a big difference for them in the postseason. Doris Burke has some information for us. Doris? Kevin, Greg Popovich was just going over the plan with his team. He gave his guys the green light to keep firing from downtown, telling them, listen, I like the work you're doing out there. Keep finding those gaps on the perimeter. They're giving us open shots. And Gerald Henderson is going to pick up that foul. That's his first foul. You could tell it was almost tunnel vision on that pass. Had no idea where the defender was. Yeah, how about the sharp steal and then run out? It looks like they're ready to put the hammer down. Well, we've been waiting for one of these teams, Greg, to pull away. Maybe that'll be a springboard for them. Could be. A dunk like that coming off a great defensive play has to build some momentum. Harkless gets to Anderson. Green with the block. Parker outside. 
Launches it. And it's Portland with the rebound. Henderson gets to Leonard. All going up court. Oh, and the jam by Hartless. Went for the two-hander on that slam. That's where the weight move comes into play, Kevin. <laughs> I think some urgency from him there. Yeah, I think he's sensing that this is a critical time in the game, fellas. One made three form for the game. Does he focus closer in? Let's see. It's deflected. Handles the dishes to Harkless. And now running up the court. Leonard pushing it up. And Gerald Henderson is going to pick up that foul. That'll be his second foul of the game. An almost entirely new group here for Portland. Plumley is checked in for Davis. Aminu comes in for Maurice Harkless. CJ McCollum is checked in for Gerald Henderson. And Damian Willard subbed in for Brian Rockers. And San Antonio also making a switch. Mills is checked in for Parker. Right side Leonard. And it's Portland with the rebound. Aminu's got his third rebound on the night. And here's McCollum for three. Deflects the pass. San Antonio's gone over three so far in the fourth quarter from long range. And Lillard kicks to Plumlee. And the rejection by Leonard. They get it back. Leonard the pass to Aminu. McCollum with the ball. Leonard picks him up. Slammed in by Plumlee. Right back to the basics there, using the one-hand slam for that. Doesn't he make the basics a great exception? Yeah, he does. They look sweet when he does it. And, and he better stay with those basics, because this game is still yet to be determined. Leonard dishes to Mills. To end the drought. No good off the back of the rim. He's certainly not been at his best this quarter. And that's an understatement. And thus far, they've managed to overcome an off game from him offensively. Good! And he has brought them to within two points. And since halftime, he has been a different player. Here's Plumley. Yes! They don't get any bigger than that basket. They needed it, Greg, and he gave it to them. The three for Mills. It's rebounded by Leonard. A bucket here would give them a bit more room. True, but, but no need to rush it. Play smart. Feeds it to Lillard. To the paint. Here's Plumley, And he bangs it home with one hand. And really, I like the fact that even with the big lead, they never coasted. To me, that's a sign of a really good team, Greg, because you should always be playing against the game and yourself. I know there's an opponent out there, but when you have a lead, it's all about continuing to execute. Do what you do and stay true to that. And I like that aggressiveness and full speed ahead uh, kind of attack that they have. Time called here. The Spurs decide to talk it over. They're down by six. 23 seconds left in the game. Guys, what's your take? And they still got a little time to play with, so a three and a quick foul could make things interesting. Yeah, but they need some help. They're going to need some help any way you look at it. I mean, they're hoping for some missed free throws at the other end. Mm -hmm, good. Just like soup. <laughs> a little more ferocious, though. Okay, Clark approves, everybody. <laughs> yeah, but that's how you finish strong. Young fellas wearing the rim out. There's 18 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. They kick it out to Green. West passes to Green. No good from West. And you saw how quick the defense was. They were ready for one. They got the hand in the face there and made that much more difficult. Yeah, and every team needs that kind of rugged interior defense because you want to try to distract your opponents when they get inside, and you also want to make them uncomfortable in their shot attempts. 